On today's Toolbox, Matt and Winnie are going to show us the latest goodness being sent the way of WPF and WinForms apps. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today are Matt Corwell and Winnie Lee. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Good. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Matt and Winnie are in App Center land, and we're going to talk about App Center today. Now, App Center has been around for a while, um, and we've done an episode or two on this show, and of course, James has covered it on the Xamarin show. And you think about App Center as DevOps for mobile apps, mm -hmm. right? But it's expanding, and you guys are going to talk about App Center for WPF and WinForms. What? Yeah, exactly. We are. <laughs> yeah. Really, we're, we're, we're hoping to be App Center for distributed apps, right? Things that are not co-located where you are and maybe multiple instances around the world. Cool. So I guess the, that immediately brings to mind two questions. One is, how does that work? Which you'll show us. But two, why? Because we already have DevOps for WPF and WinForms. It's called Azure DevOps Services, <laughs> right? It is. So it you is. don't have yes. to answer that right <laughs> now, but uh, as we talk about it, those are the two questions I want to cover. How does it work and why? Yeah. And then which one would I choose as a WPF or WinForms developer? Yeah, absolutely. So App Center is actually um, very different and is a great supplement to users already using Azure DevOps. Um, so we've kind of realized there's not a great tool in the space that allows Windows developers to easily manage their releases, um, look at their crash reports, and just better understand who's using their um, application and get the analytics that they need to really um, deliver the best user experience. Okay. And so um, if you're already using Azure DevOps, um, fantastic. Continue using that. Build your app in Azure DevOps, and App Center will help you release those apps that you build in Azure DevOps. Um, so we, we really think about those two products as a complement to one ah, another. Okay. Mm -hmm. So use one and then s use the other, use them side by side, basically. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they really, as, as when he said, they, they fill different gaps, and that mm -hmm. really speaks to the why. Is that as a, as a Windows developer, there are lots of tools at my disposal, but I, I really believe there isn't a set of tools that brings this piece of the puzzle together in a comprehensive way, right? You can, you can build things with Visual Studio, you can uh, do your DevOps stuff on Azure DevOps, you can run it on Azure, but how do you, how do you manage your app when it's on a million devices in the wild? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you see who's using it? How do you track logs? All these pieces are things that there really is not a turnkey solution for, and we, we hope that's what we're, we're bringing to folks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess for those of you who don't know what App Center is, we are an end-to-end -end solution for developers. Um, so like you mentioned, you know, James have talked about it probably on Xamarin. We support iOS, Android, and most recently we expanded our platforms to support um, desktop apps as well. Mm -hmm. So WPF and WinForm applications uh, targeting .NET Framework as of today. Um, so today we can go over the top three most requested services. Um, so I'll be doing a quick overview of what these services actually look like in App Center, and then Matt will actually show how to get this up and running under five to ten minutes. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so cool. So you can see my screen here. This is a sample app that we have. Uh, the screen you're looking at is just an overview of how to get started with some SDK instructions that Matt will actually be going over in a bit. Um, first off, we have Distribute. Um, this is a service that allows you to easily manage how to release your apps to your end users. Um, so over here, you can see the releases I've made to the beta testers and to myself um, in the past day. Um, I'm able to see how many downloads I have, how many unique downloads I have, and I can also sort this table um, by what's most relevant to me. Um, under Groups, I can create a new distribution group. Um, these can be your beta testers, your end users, really anyone you want to download your app. Um, all I have to do is add their email address here, um, click Create Group, and then I'll see a group uh, appear in this screen. And in the, in the Y section, to keep sticking with that one, this, this is, I think, one of the fundamental pieces that is very different than what Azure DevOps would offer. Mm -hmm. um, getting getting that, um, that app to either testers or end users. Um, there's not a compelling story for that that I'm aware of um, elsewhere, and so this this starts to become super valuable. So putting setup.exe on a jump drive and walking it over to another computer and having somebody run that, you don't consider that compelling? <laughs> I mean, it's totally compelling if you're co-located. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, we found it really interesting. Our, our team is actually, we've got 15 or so time zones around the yes. world, right? And, and people working on these things, and so, um, this kind of centralized push model 
where where I can control who sees what and when, mm -hmm. and and let things go to to customers. And while we don't yet support it for the Windows story, um, we do have in-app updates where you can basically help help auto update a user from within App Center. Um, really, is a game changer to mm -hmm. be honest. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, looking at distribution, um, I can click here for a new release. And like Matt was saying, if you're using Azure DevOps, it's great. Build your app in Azure DevOps and then upload your app package here. Um, so we support .zip, MSI, um, a lot of different package formats that um, can meet your need. So once you upload your package here, I just click Next. Um, I specify some release notes, who I want to distribute my app to. Um, and then I'm done. Can I do the build in App Center as well? Uh, not yet. So okay. right now um, in Azure DevOps, you can build those apps. So we definitely encourage users to use Azure DevOps okay. for that. Um, and if we decide there's a need to support that in App Center as well, that is something that and we can look into as well. Over time, eventually, the tools will probably coalesce into a single location. Maybe. You'd have to ask someone with more knowledge <laughs> of the, the future plan than I, but it would not. I don't think it'd be unreasonable right. to, to picture a world where that happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's our um, distribution service. Um, the next one we have is Diagnostics. Um, so this is a service that allows you to see when your apps are crashing. Um, it gives you a good overview of the different types of crashes and errors. Uh, I can click into a crash group and get a little bit more um, details. I can look at my stack traces, look at the individual reports, see which devices um, are crashing, and get some other data that will help me understand what's actually going on once mm -hmm. my app is being used by the end, my end users. Right. And in, in that world where you've walked that zip drive around to 100 people, and um, traditionally, right, working through emails, asking people to send you logs, right, even if you've got your logs going to a central location, looking at logs as raw data is very different than looking at rich data that's yeah. been grouped and augmented and, and provided in a way to help you as a developer figure out what's wrong, mm -hmm. right? And there are some other tools uh, in this space that, that do this. I don't think any of them hit the mark with um, this kind of complete end-to-end -end picture. Mm -hmm. And so, so really, at this point, you've got your ability to send your app out across the world. And you've got your ability to get that data brought back to you and, and presented in, I hope, a really useful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with features like cool. events or attachments, um, we really allow you to customize what you need in a crash reporting tool um, to really understand what's going on with your app. So that's what we have for diagnostics. Um, and last but not least, we have analytics. Um, so all this data you see right here is out of the box. All you need to do is integrate our SDK, and you'll start seeing these metrics flow in. Um, so you see how many users you have, um, the daily sessions, where your users are, what devices they're using, a lot of really great stuff for you to understand who your user base is um, and you know, what features they're using and how you can really deliver the best experience for them. Um, so all this nice data is here, and then you can go into our events tab and actually set specific events that you want to track. So if you care about a very specific set of features or you care what buttons users are clicking, um, those are things that you can track um, using our SDK as well. Cool. So yeah, those are the three services that we decided to introduce um, WPF and WinForm support first. Um, and Matt will go ahead and actually show us how to get started. Yeah, if we want to flip over to my machine for a minute. Yeah. Um, so to just if, if that, all you did was use the distribution, it seems like that's pretty cool for starters. If that's all you yeah. did to get the app onto other people's machines easily when they're ready to do it, and you just push up the latest build. So if you then make a change to the app, anybody, anybody can go get it. They'll get notified if there's updates, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you just have a central location that's not sitting on a drive somewhere. Yep. Right. <laughs> That's it, pretty it, cool. Yeah, I really I really do think it changes the way Windows developers can start thinking about shipping this stuff. Yep. Right. Um, I know we're talking about WinForms and WPF. Um, and so we're not necessarily talking about the store. And there are, like I said, there are other other broader options out there. Um, but I don't think anything targets it with, with this kind of focus from mm -hmm. a really developer first mindset. Right. Our our goal is to make developers as developers, we want to make other developers' lives easy. Um, and I, I, this is, a, I think, a really right. good first step for the Windows space. Cool. And people can go to aka.ms App Center Windows to learn more about this. Yep. We'll have links to the documentation. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm actually going to just walk us through yeah. the uh, initial like documentation. And just so people can see it, I know as a developer, seeing that actually played out is a lot easier than reading the docs sometimes. So hopefully, this will all work and make sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So. Um, the AKA MS link will take us, well, I'm just going to click everywhere, um, <laughs> take us to the getting started page. 
um, which essentially says, create an app on App Center, follow a couple steps to integrate it, start making your ash crap. App crash. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, go from there. And so here I am uh, over in App Center. Um, I have a few apps ready. I'm going to create a brand new app. Mm -hmm. And let's call this VS Toolbox. And I'm going to say it's a Windows app, WPF, and add a new app. So UWP is already supported, I see. UWP is, is uh, partially supported, partially. and we'll actually talk about that at the end. We have okay. plans to get U UWP up and running all the way in, um, but I think right now WPF and WinForms are the furthest along. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm adding a new app, assuming the network and everything is working. There we go. And so it drops me into the same page we saw Winnie looking at a few minutes earlier, mm -hmm. and here on my machine I've got Visual Studio open, and I'm just going to go File, New, uh, where did my, let me just close it and start fresh here. All right, I'm going to create a new project. And I want to do WPF, mm -hmm. app targeting .NET Framework. As Winnie said, right now we target .NET Framework standard. Um, we do have, uh, Changes coming. So in in the wild in production today, you can use WPF with .NET Framework. Um, our next SDK release, which I believe is mid to late August, will target .NET Core three oh, for cool. WPF okay. and WinForms apps. Um, that won't be cross plat. It's still Windows because that's where the UI framework runs. Yep. But we are we are definitely moving to that kind of uh, OS agnostic platform versions. Right. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to get this app up and running. Toolbox, put it in there. And then to get this up and running, I think our main steps are going to be just following, following the guideline, which is going to be adding a few NuGet packages, mm -hmm. as it says right here. Um, I put this code into the start of my app to initialize the SDK with the information about my app. And that GUID in there is your app secret? Yes, that's mm -hmm. your actual value. So, so App Center knows which app data is coming from. Correct. Mm -hmm. and where to route it on the back end. So is it actually a secret or is it just an identifier? Um, so, you know, it's a really good question. Um, it is just an identifier um, that uh, is named a secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, we don't, um, I don't think we publish it a lot of places in mm -hmm. the UI. I don't think it's a common reference point. Mm -hmm. um, but, so. It's a good okay. question, but not <laughs> without a great answer. But if you All don't right. treat it like a secret and people use your ID in their apps or you use the same ID in multiple apps, then you lose the ability to really know what app caused the problem, right? Certainly. And, and I think the so R... It's, the, it's an, a unique identifier for the app. It is. Mm -hmm. And our, our intention would be that as every, every time you create a new app here in App Center, you would get a new one of these, right. and you would see it through there. And so I think I think as you get in and use it, it becomes pretty clear that an app is a sandbox for mm -hmm. all the data, the distribution, right. the diagnostics, the analytics. And so it's really up to you. I mean, it could theoretically, I suppose, you could have the same app secret in several different executables. Um, but I'm not sure that pattern uh, would make sense for the use cases we've thought of. Maybe there are other use cases out right. there. Right, so I want to. Just want to know how many users you have total, and you're too lazy to do the math. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's <laughs> one way to go about it. So I had I've included pre-release on our SDKs right now. Uh, the SDKs are in pre-release version but that will be changing. Um, so we're going to install these. Also, I want to go ahead and change. I don't remember if I just picked it or not. I want to change the .NET version to. Uh, four or five, because that's what we found out this morning was on your machine. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. want to make sure this runs as we do it. So I'm installing the crashes. And you'll see that Matt is installing two separate packages, because our services are actually um, modular, meaning if you want a crash reporting tool and not an mm -hmm. analytics, that's fine. You okay. can just import um, the crashes NuGet package, and everything will work just as well. Um, right. But we do want to put everything in one spot so it is easier um, if you do want distribution, diagnostics, and analytics mm -hmm. all in one. All right. 
And it would also seem like this would be a handy place to create an extension that just says, set up my app mm -hmm. for App Center. Yeah. Right? So, uh, yeah, so something we've done. It installs the packages, it adds that line of code, and then you just copy the secret in and you're the unique identifier and you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. We would love to hear more ideas like that. <laughs> um, definitely drop us a feature request, um, any feedback that you have. And we do keep our roadmap and our iteration plans on our public GitHub mm -hmm. repo. Okay. So uh, Microsoft slash App Center under GitHub, I, so. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put the uh, official link in the details. But all we feature crests, like I said, the roadmap, where we're going with things, what's coming when, is all on there. Trying mm -hmm. to keep that, you know, living in transparency. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got our two packages installed. So I'm going to go over to my main window and uh, actually I'm going to go to my app CS because that's where yep. the start of the app is. And so I'm, as a developer here, I'm just going to find out which key works on my Mac. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Generate overrides. I don't need all of them. I just need on startup. Okay, so I've overridden startup so I can put the App Center specific code in there. When I go copy in uh, the usings, even though it would do it for me, I don't trust my keys, my fingers on these keys. And paste. And back one more time. Copy it in, and like you said, it's mm -hmm. convenient that this is my data and everything is good there. Paste it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and build real quick uh, before I do anything else to make sure I didn't mess anything up this far. That'll ha hamstring us later. All right, build worked. So I've got that up and running. And if I run my app, we should see that it starts and it's just a, a blank window, right? So far, nothing uh, particularly noticeable. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. This is <laughs> this looks like every every UI I've ever designed Battle in my life. Ship white. Right here. Um, all right, and so. The next step, I'm going to cheat just a little bit, um, rather than trying to m type this out from memory because I'm losing mine. Um, just go ahead and put this in. So let me go to the main Windows YAML, bring in a couple of buttons. Now I don't normally build apps with buttons that say "crash them." <laughs> um, I, you know, no judgment if that's <laughs> your thing, but uh, that makes this easy right here. So I've got the buttons, I've got the code behind, and there we go. Let's get those in there. All right, so we've got all those in and running. And as you can see, these three buttons actually exhibit a couple different things in the App Center world. So we have a concept of crashes and errors when your application crashes and has to restart, mm -hmm. right? If you, I mean, a divide by zero error, an unhandled exception, right? Um, there is also a concept of what we called handled errors. Uh, mm -hmm. Just think of it as a uh, robust uh, error.log. So rather than the user app crashing, you might identify that there was no network connection or you couldn't find the right version of a file on a server. Something that is manageable but you want to know about, we allow you to track as handled errors and see those in that same diagnostics UI. Um, and then they will actually give you the full stack trace and the other uh, memory data at the same time, mm -hmm. so you can go a little bit deeper than a raw log. Okay. So these are up and running. Um, I think yep, I'm going to need to add the using yep. for crashes, right? Yep. And I'm just gonna copy it from over here. Copy. Come on, you can do it. Put that in there. All right. So. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and run this app. And so this would work from my machine in debug. This will work in release. And as we'll see in a little bit, we'll send it over to Winnie's machine and it should work over there. Okay. So if I come in here and I say throw handled error, um, I didn't put a new UI in there, but we can validate if that did its thing. So when I go back to my app under diagnostics, give it just a minute to work its way through the pipes of the internet. And obviously, if you don't have connectivity, they're all cached, and then they get sent up when you're connected. Uh, yes. 
Um, I believe that's the case for handled errors. It's definitely mm -hmm. for crashes. So as we'll see in a minute, with when an app crashes, we actually send it on next restart. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we've we learned through our our time in the mobile space is that trying to do any processing when something's gone fatally wrong in an app is is a good way to make things worse. And so we capture a text file actually of what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the app next starts, it sees if there's a thing there, and we'll we'll send that data okay. to App Center then. Got so it. when you're back in a healthy state. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll click it a couple more times. It should show up relatively soon. You can do it. There we go. Hey, All right. Hello. So hey. so we see that today we had one error. If I come in here and look at that error that I just got, like I said, it's it's uh, in this case this is all the stack trace that was there because mm -hmm. that's what we put in there. Right. I see the reports. Um, I can go into. This one, I can see this one, we know it was running on a virtual machine. See the main thread. I didn't really give it much data here, but this is the general idea. And, mm -hmm. and also under analytics, I'm going to see that I had one unique user show up today. Yep. And I haven't, I haven't gone in and uh, done much of the other data, right? I'm, I'm just in English, right? There's not a lot of writing here, but this is the basic feedback. So the other thing to show then is to see a crash. So in this case, it's going to stop the app, and when I restart it, it'll get sent off to App Center, right? Cool. All right, so that's that's the diagnostics piece. What, what I think takes this really to another level is being able to ship that over to right. somebody else. Yep. And so uh, with just, I hope, a few clicks here, we can do the same thing on Winnie's machine as a real life end user and see the diagnostics yeah. and analytics come in. Let's mm -hmm. see that. So let's, let's do this. So the easiest way uh, is to just go ahead and publish this app. I'm just publish it to my desktop for now. And let's get it in desktop. Let's make a new folder. Put it in there. Open that. Finish. Let it do its thing. All right, there I am. I'm mm -hmm. going to add this folder to a zip file. I'm going to click in it a couple times. So it's the uh, virtual thumb drive that we're using in this right. instance. <laughs> so we do support MSI, we do support AppX and some other uh, platforms for the sake of this demo. It's the easiest to go. So, so I'm going to go over to distribute. If you build it in Azure DevOps, can you just point App Center to that build? You can't as of yet. You have to okay. download it and bring it over. Right. Um, but uh, that is definitely the flow, in fact, for a lot of the other platforms that, mm -hmm. are, that are a little bit further down the road. Okay. It just happens automatically. Right. If you build in either Azure DevOps or App Center, mm -hmm. there's nothing else to do. Right. So okay. we're, we'd like to right. get to that point yep. here. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you see, I haven't sent my app to anybody yet. <clears throat> I'm going to upload the zip that we did over here. Let's just give it 1.0.0, mm -hmm. and then yuli1 is mm -hmm. your. Uh, yeah. This is my app. It doesn't crash. <laughs> but it does. Yet. Works on my box. Right? Yet. There we go. All right. So it, it, it knows Winnie is engaged in App Center mm -hmm. as a tester. I'm going to send it over. And all right. So I can see this there. So if we can flip back over to Winnie's machine. She should get an email uh, in the next minute or two. Right here. Oh. It's already there. So I'm very excited to install this app that does not crash. So you'll see it takes me to the install screen. So see Matt's very truthful comment mm -hmm. here. It worked on my box. <laughs> I'm going to click download. I'm just going to open it. And then you'll see the app right here. So mm -hmm. if I click here, um, let me just open up the executable. And this I didn't bother to give me some do some official, warnings. So, so. Yep. <laughs> says, do you trust this is Yahoo? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm gonna install that. And All now right, I have the app is. on my machine. Cool. So nice. why don't you give us a handled error and then a uh, crash maybe? All right, let's see. So we hit handled error. Let's do a stack overflow crash. Takes a second because, you know, <laughs> it's got to run it out. If you open the app back up. Let's see. 
and then we didn't give you access to the app as a collaborator. Mm -hmm. So as a tester, I don't believe you're able to see all the, the diagnostics information, right? Because that's my business. I've just mm -hmm. asked her to test it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could flip back to my machine one last time. And I go back into diagnostics. We should see in a minute when they process through the pipeline um, that we have a number of crashes and a number of handled errors coming from Winnie's machine. And like at there's the, you, so you did the stack overflow exception. Mm -hmm. um, I did the, the other one there. And under analytics, we should now see that I have two users, nice. two users coming in and let me know what's going on. So take, take that and extrapolate it out across tens, thousands. You know, we have apps with millions of users, mm -hmm. tens of millions of users. Um, this starts to really just, just take that distributed debugging. You're talking about historical debugging. Like clearly, we're not actually debugging, mm -hmm. but we are providing information that will allow you to understand how to prioritize what to fix and hopefully how to have enough information to know what to fix. Mm -hmm. Right. That is so cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that is, so this is in preview, um, mm -hmm. available for anyone to use. Mm -hmm. It's out there in the wild today. All yes, right. aka.ms forward slash app center windows for more information. You guys got to check this out. Uh, give it a shot and let these guys know how you like it and what new things should go into it. And this is so, f this is really cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it as, as someone who spent a lot of years in this space before mm -hmm. I got to App Center, we really are doing things that are not uh, not really brought together anywhere else, which is awesome. And with the coming support for NetCore 3, that's another step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some future plans there to take that, I think, a little bit further, even outside of the UI section, but we're not quite officially there yet, so we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Awesome. Thank you very much for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.